Control. This is Mars 295, ready for departure. 295, roger. Countdown is go at T-minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, everyone. It's Jonas Lamas with Tezos today, and I'm excited to do a new video for you. As you know, that uh, the Tezos Commons Foundation is a U.S.-based nonprofit that is uh, chartered with funding Tezos activities around the world. In particular, it's been running meetups both in the US and in Europe, and it's also starting to fund grants for educational projects. The One of the first grants that went out was to a company called Zastrin, uh, run by Mahesh Murthy. And Zastrin is an uh, online education program that has traditionally built uh, modules to help people learn how to develop dApps and other kinds of uh, blockchain activities on the Ethereum ecosystem. And they've now launched one uh, first, their first course for Tezos. And so we have uh, Mahesh with us here today, and I'd like to invite him to introduce himself, give us a little bit of background about himself and, and uh, Zastrin, and then we'll take a look at the course. Hello, Mahesh. Hey, Janice. Thanks for uh, having me. Um, hey everyone, uh, this is Mahesh Murthy from uh, Zastrin. Um, Zastrin is um, it's an online school for learning uh, blockchain programming by building uh, real world projects. So all our courses um, actually helps you build projects and it's basically learn by doing. So you won't be sitting and like actually just watching videos or anything. So you will be actually getting your hands dirty, hands on coding. So that's the um, the concept behind the website. And uh, we started out with uh, just Ethereum. Uh, for the last one year, we've been publishing a lot of Ethereum-related courses. And uh, now we are um, starting with uh, the next one is uh, Tezos, because uh, Tezos is uh, an exciting technology. So, And we Great. launched our first course. Awesome, yeah, we're gonna take a look at that in a minute. But before we get, get to the Tezos course, can you give us a background about what made you passionate to get into the Ethereum education space and uh, what you've learned so far in the last year of uh, building and deploying courses? Yeah, um, so in general, I've been like fascinated with blockchain for like almost five or five years. And uh, when Ethereum came out, it was really exciting because as a developer, as an engineer, I could actually build these decentralized applications, which you couldn't really easily do it on the Bitcoin blockchain. So when Ethereum came out, it was like exciting. You could like actually use a high level programming language to build these applications. So that's how I got started. And then um, I found that there were not many resources back then and all of the most of them were outdated and it was extremely hard to get started. Um, so as I was figuring out, digging into the source code, talking to developers and I figured out and then uh, just to help the community, I started blogging about these, um, um, what I was learning. And then um, I started blogging how to articles and how to guides and uh, people started really liking it. And um, they were asking for like more, like because they, they were liking how I explained things and I used to keep the code always up to date and um, that's how um, I got started, just publishing blog posts on Medium. And then eventually um, I saw this had some legs and I'm like passionate. I have always liked um, teaching, helping out. So this was like a natural progression. Um, so, I, so I started a company and then um, I've been publishing courses uh, for a while now. That's amazing. Uh, so, and so what... Uh, two questions, and then we'll get into the Tezos stuff. Number one is like, what is your business model uh, for this? I know that the Tezos Commons Foundation has funded you to develop this first first course. What what happens after that, and what have you learned um, about providing free education versus paid education on the Ethereum side, and uh, how many how many customers have you educated? Uh, yeah, so the business model is um, it's pay per course. So I have uh, three other courses on Ethereum. There's one free and there's three paid courses. So people buy, uh, people come on the site, they work through the free course, and if they like it, uh, there are more advanced courses. So they buy the course and they have it for a lifetime. The courses are constantly updated, so they can always access it. Once they buy it, they can always access it. And um, so, um, 
in the near future, I'm going to be introducing like a subscription service as well. So nice. people can subscribe, uh, but that's the business model. Awesome. Okay, so um, let's take a look at what you've put together for Tezos. I think in your uh, in your Hangout window there, there's a, uh, a green screen share in the upper left-hand corner, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, if you can go ahead and take over the screen there, you can show us what you've built. Okay, let's see. Great, I can see it. Can see my site? I can see it. OK. Um, this is um, my website. So you can go on uh, zastrin.com. And um, I have uh, a whole bunch of courses. The very first one I have right now is the one which I just launched, um, which is uh, building a simple dApp on Tezos. Um, you can get started for free thanks to the uh, uh, TCF for uh, sponsoring this course. It was uh, it was uh, it was fun figuring out and building this course. Um, I wanted to just quickly give you an overview of like what you will learn in this course. Um, you're basically um, you're going to be building a fully decentralized application, um, which would look very similar to. What you have here. Uh, this is based built on Ethereum, where you have um, it's a voting application, where we have a bunch of candidates, and you can cast votes for these candidates, and um, all the votes are recorded on the blockchain. So um, anyone can audit the uh, votes and basically look at uh, it, it's completely transparent. It's completely open. Um, so let's go into the course. Uh, so one of the prerequisites for this is, um, this is the first of a series of courses I plan to uh, create. This is the first one. The, in, the goal of this course is to just get you started, like just get you started on what Tezos is and um, get you installed and set up with all the necessary software and um, build a simple smart contract and build the front end. So it expects that you are uh, you know something about like blockchain, how blockchain works at a very high level at least. Um, and then uh, since we will be using uh, liquidity, which is a a functional programming language, which is which is different from um, like an object oriented programming language and things like those. So it would be beneficial if uh, people know some functional programming language. Um, otherwise, there is. Um, I have links to some of these free uh, OCaml tutorials, which which should take like an hour or so to just to get your head around. Like as long as you're a developer, you should be able to uh, learn these uh, fairly quickly. So as long as you know a little bit of blockchain and you are a developer um, and you have some basic knowledge of HTML, JavaScript would be good, but uh, it's it's not like absolutely necessary because I go through all of these in the videos in detail. So as long as you are, um, you know these, you can get started. And then um, uh, here's a screenshot of the application we'll be building. And um, before we start to actually build this application, I wanted to give some context on like what Tezos is, the high level overview of like how the proof of stake works. And then when you download this software, like what all components it has. So I go over those components. Um, and then um, there are a few things you want to know, like the whole how the Tezos accounts work. There's the gas and storage. Uh, these are the, like the basic things you need to get started. In this first course, I didn't want to go too much in depth because I myself like get bored if it's too much theory. Um, I like to tinker and then build and then simultaneously learn. So I kept it like short and sweet. So these are the core concepts you need. Uh, to get started. And then I have like detailed installation instructions. Um, like I have a like, recorded video, and then there is like instructions on how to install all the necessary software. So we install the like, Tezos node, and then we also install liquidity, which is the language we will be using. So you'll be installing the liquidity compiler. And then we go through like a series of videos to 
which introduce you, introduces you to liquidity programming language. And then we'll be implementing the smart contract in, um, in an online editor, in, in an online IDE. So these series of videos will take you through like how to uh, implement a smart contract and then deploy it to our Um So that's the whole backend part. And then finally, the front end is you will be implementing the front end, which is like HTML and JavaScript to um, build out the functionality to display the vote counts and voting for a candidate and looking at these votes in the uh, blockchain. So that's, um, it feels, a, a, um, it's it's a good amount of uh, it. It'll take you probably like 10, 15 hours if everything goes smooth. I think um, so. That was the intention of the first course to to just get you started, and from there on you can um, build more complex smart contracts and things like those. So it looks amazing. Uh, I think uh, voting is a fantastic first app for you to. Uh, to share with everyone, given our focus on on-chain governance, even though mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the app that people will use to vote for blockchain improvements, it's still a great way for people to think about some of the value propositions that that, that Tezos offers. What um, what did you find was the most surprising uh, part of how developing a, an app on Tezos works as you yourself were working through this process? Um, your screen share is still on there. Oh, okay. Um, so it was um, I, I, when I went in and when I started figuring it out, um, I was um, I was not hundred percent sure uh, um, how smooth the process would be because when it's back in the day when I was doing the Ethereum like. It was common. The technology is still new. There's so many moving parts. Like there's installation issues and things like those. Um, but uh, with Tezos, uh, surprising. The first surprising part was I followed uh, on the uh, GitLab the documentation, and there was barely any surprise. Like it just it was smooth installation. I was like, okay, that's a, that's a good first start. Um, so that was nice. And then I was able to start up the node and sync to the AlphaNet because there's not a whole lot of data yet. It was like fairly uh, uh, easy to sync um, sync the chain. Um, and then was the um, installing the liquidity and the compiler. Uh, it, it took me some time there. Like I know functional programming languages. Like I have done a little bit of uh, like scheme lisp. Like I've I've learned a lot of languages, even though I haven't written production level lang uh, production code um, a lot in those languages. Um, so it took me some time to like go on the OCaml website and work through a few tutorials. Um, I think a lot of the developers coming into Tezos will have will go through this exact same thing. Um, if you're not if you're not doing day-to-day -day functional programming, it will take some time. So that was where I got a little stuck. And um, I a couple of times I had to email the liquidity core developers, like, hey, um, I'm like running into some issues. Like, can you help out? And um, they were like very, very helpful. Like Webrace was um, super helpful. They yeah, shout out to the team over there at OCaml Pro. They're a fantastic group of folks who have helped put that together. Yeah, so they helped me with the uh, some of fixing some of my code and then suggesting like, oh, you could do it this way. And then also I had some issues running. I ran into some issues like actually deploying the code. Um, I didn't even know Liquidity um, has a tool set for like deploying the code. Um, I thought you had to do it only through the Tezos client. So. Um, I ran into some issues there, but I was able to work through um, some of those issues. Um, but I think as more developers come into this uh, ecosystem, what is going to happen is more frameworks will be built. Like right now, if someone going through this course, they can see that the way I'm like deploying the code, it's it's not very like smooth. Like um, I think people will build frameworks. Uh, like Ethereum has like a Truffle uh, framework, which is very popular. Similar to that, I'm I'm sure like more frameworks will come, which will make all of this management easy and build out abstractions. Um, and then um, 
Uh, figuring out the front end part, there was there was another challenge where I ran into issues because the documentation wasn't fully up to date. Uh, but I went in with this mindset, like I knew like the technology is new, a lot of things are changing. The funny thing was when I was um, I built the first smart contract with the liquidity, and then by the time I recorded all the videos, like few things had changed. I was like, wait a minute, so I had to go go like uh, update those things and then then record my videos. So and none of them were surprising, to be honest. Uh, yeah. So some things were like smooth. Some things I ran into like issues. Um, so some were like helpful. So, uh, but it was it's exciting. Like um, it's it's always fun when you put all the pieces together and uh, get a fully functional app working. Awesome. Yeah. Great job on that. So uh, the Tezos Foundation announced that they are going to. Uh, fund the training of a thousand uh, Tezos developers in 2019, but I think we're getting a, a good head start on them here with uh, with with this course kicking off here in 2018. Do you have any expectations on uh, how many folks we can get to use it between now and then, and the end of the year? Um, well, so um, I think the uh, TCF actually um, um, helped spread the word, and then we have um, I think 175 signups um for interested in learning this course so awesome. we're almost like at 200 which is like um and then i have a, a few thousand uh, user base on the ethereum side who are all like also interested so i'm going to send out so maybe we'll hit like three four hundred people by end of the year let's see i think you're going to have to get busy on building that next course yeah i'm like i already have a like list of things i want to like build next but then I'm also um, want feedback from the developers, like what they want to do, like also like uh, learn. Um, so um, if you are listening to this, like if you are a developer, if you want to, if you work through my first course, and if you have more requests and suggestions and feedback, I would be um, happy to um, incorporate those things in the next courses. Awesome. All right, Mahesh Murthy from Zastrin has given us a fantastic demo of the new Zastrin Tezos app course that's launching today, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are uh, we're excited to get the word out about it. We thank the Tezos Commons Foundation for funding uh, the development work of this uh, this first course. The Tezos Commons Foundation uh, provides grants to anyone out there who'd like to do educational outreach activities or uh, meetups or other interesting things in the Tezos ecosystem. You can find uh, the Tezos Commons online at www.tezoscommons.org. And the Zastrin is again at Z-A-S-T-R-I-N.com. I believe that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. And I'm Jonas Lamas. Uh, and you can find my site at tezos.community. So uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, and thanks, uh, uh, Mahesh, for joining us. And we'll look forward to talking to you all soon on the next Tezos Today. Likewise. Thank you, Jonas. And uh, again, thank you, uh, TCF, for sponsoring the course. Great. Bye, everybody.